Hey, this is Mrs. Weepy here for a special video lesson. Warning, gummy bears were harmed in the production of this film. This was done by trained professionals, so only do it at a friend's house. Not really, just don't do it. You ever see a gummy bear in its natural habitat? But we must be careful because it's very territorial. Now let's see what happens when we add two grams of potassium chlorate. But before we do, let's have a look at some safety precautions that we should follow. El cinco es fallo. El glaciente. Make sure you have appropriate glassware that's capable of withstanding high temperatures. Also, make sure you wear an apron that can protect against chemicals, spills, and other heated or toxic substances. Make sure you also always wear goggles. It protects again against chemicals, spills, and other things that could hurt your eye. All put together, you're ready to roll. Just get the chemicals. But before we can obliterate gummy bears, first we need to see how it's done. So she doesn't get to uh, we have come across a reaction that is extremely exothermic, and uh, the reaction that we have is a reaction between potassium chlorate and its molten state, and the sugar is found within sweet gummy bears in particular. And uh, the, this reaction is one that yields uh, carbon dioxide, water, uh, potassium chloride, and a lot of energy. You all know the meaning of pain! Yeah. Everyone loves to see things explode. Why not do it in a scientific environment? Uh, make sure you wear gloves, apron, goggles, proper glassware. Get the scale ready. You have the potassium chloride there, and it has a warning label, and it's fairly uh, hazardous if it comes into contact with your skin. Uh, but here we're using a chemical spatula and we're trying to scoop out exactly two grams of the potassium chlorate. So after we pour the two grams of potassium chlorate into the test tube, we're going to lock it into the test tube stand and point it away from ourselves and then move the whole apparatus behind the glass shield so that if anything spews out of the test tube it's obviously going to be extremely hot and we don't want it on ourselves or in the lab area and so now what next what we're going to do is um, heat up the potassium chlorate with the Bunsen burner until it's in its molten state and that uh, turns the potassium chlorate from a fine white powder into a, a cloudy liquid and at that point, it's ready to react quite vigorously with the gummy bear. Here we go. Dude, don't set anything on fire. So that was the control where there was two grams of potassium chlorate and one red gummy bear. So the potassium chlorate breaks down into potassium chloride and excess oxygen, which will be then used in the combustion, and it also generates heat, which is sufficient enough to ignite the gummy bear. The ignition of the gummy bear uh, produces enough heat to further proceed the breaking down of the potassium chlorate and thus generating further destruction to the gummy bear. Now we must modify a variable so that we can test the reaction rates. Because we are changing either reactants separately, we will be able to see which change in concentration has the most drastic effect on the reaction. The variable that we're changing first is the concentration of one of the reactants. We'll be adding twice the amount of gummy bear. Because of the increase of the reactants, the reaction will tilt more towards the products. Here we have the same amount of potassium chlorate at the same temperature in the same type of gummy bear. In variation number one, uh, we're going to double the concentration of the gummy bear part of the reactants, and instead of using only one, we're going to use two gummy bears and see what the results are. Oh, 
slow, not nearly as impressive the second time. Mm. Wow, that was super neat! For the next experiment, we will change again only one variable. Again, we will be changing the other reactant. Instead of changing the concentration of the sugars on the gummy bear, we will change the concentration of the potassium chlorate. Again, because of the increase in concentration of reactants, the reaction should lead more towards the product side and produce a more vigorous reaction. So in the final reaction, uh, we're going to change only one of the reactants at a time, and before we changed uh, the concentration of the gummy bear. So now we're going to go back to using one gummy bear like the control, except this time we're going to double the concentration of the other reactant, the potassium chlorate, which uh, in this case, this is the limiting reactant. Ooh. Oh. oh my god! It's not Never ending down That was exciting. <laughs> wow, that was way more rad than before! After this experiment, we will compare many aspects of each of the reactions and look at the reaction rates under different circumstances. Uh, so you can say in the control we use 2 grams of potassium chlorate. The second reaction we also use 2 grams of potassium chlorate because we're keeping that constant. And then in the third reaction we doubled the concentration of that using 4 grams of potassium chlorate. And then in the control we used one gummy bear. And the second, because we were doubling the concentration of that, we used two gummy bears. And then finally we reverted back to using one gummy bear in the final reaction. Uh, the time, uh, the control took a nearly 11 seconds, whereas the more gummy bear reaction took nearly twice as long, and then the more potassium chlorate reaction took nearly 25 seconds, which is much longer than either of the other two. Uh, on the relative violence scale, we have nearly 30 out of 100 for the control, and then we have a little over 14 on the gummy bear, and on the more potassium chlorate we had nearly a 60 and a half on the relative violence scale. But here we just rated how violent the reaction was from 1 to 100, 1 being not at all, 100 being enormous. So here uh, is the graph of luminosity using a photometer for the control experiment which shows the brightness, the relative brightness and it's steady here around 141 and it peaks up a little over 147 it looks like and it averages around 143 and a lot of the big spikes are the bright flashes within the test tube here you have the the more gummy reaction you see it's steady between 141 and 142 and you can see the higher concentration of uh, like beams in the forward half of the graph because that's like the preliminary reaction right there and so there are more flashes of light in the test tube still very dim but and here finally we have the more potassium chlorate which you can see is a much more uh, vigorous violent graph and it looks like it starts at 140 peaks out nearly 150 and it averages like two or three points above the control and the bars are much higher and much lower than before and so therefore uh, it had by far the brightest reaction on average and peaks this is mrs wheatley so long for now have fun be happy and just dance